Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to share from Mark chapter 2, verse 21 and verse 22. That's it. Now, I want to share this with you because I think we deal with this, this conflict in our churches. And it's very difficult to move forward when you have those who are used to a certain way holding us back. Okay, here we go. Verse 21. No man, these are Jesus' words, no man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece that filled it up takes away from the old, and the rent is made worse. Rent means the tear, the rip. Okay. 22. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine does burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Mm. Okay, let's start with the material, shall we? I am not a seamstress, but some of you are, male or female. Some of you are tailors. You know how to how to fit a piece of, of cloth into a section that needs a little help, just like a person who puts a shim in between a piece of wood and the wall to make sure everything is a tight fit. Well, you know, you guys know how, you know, you have the skills. Well, this is what hit me. What we deal with in the body of Christ, with each, with each other, sometimes even in organizations, it is difficult for veterans, old people, traditional people, uh, I'm trying to say it nicely, those that have been around to bear the heat, the, you know, bear the work and the heat of the day, and they've gone through thick and thin with the organization. They were there since the organization had diapers on, and they got that thing running and they stuck it through. And then some upstart comes. They have new ideas, new methods, quicker technology, and great knowledge of it, great skills. But you have the experience. Well, if you allow yourself to be renewed, the two of you can work very well together. But if you cannot and you are stubborn on having it your way or the highway, guess what? The whole thing can crumble. crumble because a house divided against itself shall not stand. It shall fall. So, when we deal with a new piece of material on an old garment, can you imagine how pretty and bright that new piece looks and how fresh it looks? It stands out like a sore thumb, but the old garment is still in good condition. But the two cannot seem to work together, and it causes the tear to be even worse because the new garment is strong and, and ready to endure for years to come. The old garment's already... Uh, uh, dry rod. It's it's easy to tear. The material's older. It's 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 just more fragile. So while the new piece is holding tough, the old pieces are ripping apart. And sometimes the old tends to fall apart and have hissy fits and go through all kind of explosive outbursts over change. Because change will corrupt what I've done all these years. Not necessarily so. It could enhance what you've done. If you have built a, a solid foundation and then someone else wants to build onto that or build a second or third story onto the building that you designed, do you know it could work if you have an open mind? Do you know how many ventures you could you, you could accomplish if you were just open to it doesn't have to be my way? Um, 
when Jesus talks about the new wine and old wineskins, one of the hardest churches to bring about change in are churches full of old people. Yeah, I know I'm one of them. I'm 63 years old. But I pray and try my darndest to be flexible. Because there are ideas that a child can give you if you are willing to listen and learn from that child. Child might only be three years old. Mm, are you willing to listen? Or have you earned these years of knowledge and nobody can tell you anything? You know how many churches stay small? Now, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound cold, and I do not mean any disrespect, because I'm one of you. But this is what I say to some of you that just can't accept change. Get with it, baby. Change or get off the pot. Because you are holding your church back. Now, I'm not talking about getting worldly and sinful. I'm not even dealing with that. But there are other positions to pray in besides on your knees. Believe it or not, God hears prayers in other positions too. So if that's the way you've seen prayer, and that's the only way you've done prayer, what happens if you get your legs cut off at the thigh? God not going to hear your prayer? I'm being ridiculous, but I'm trying to make a point. You're not trying to commit a sin. You want to pray, but you have no more knees. They're cut away. So you have to find another position now, don't you? Now, I'm not being cold. I don't ever want that to happen to me. I'm not making light of anybody who's had amputations. That's not even where I'm at. My point is, your position is not the only position there is in the body of Christ. And you have to own up to that. Someone else just might, just might have a better idea than you have had all these decades and centuries. Think about it. That is the reason the burst takes place. I mean, there's just, it's almost like putting two opposite opposing gangs together. One has a, a goal, the other one has a goal. Never shall the twain meet because they're so busy being op, uh, 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 opposing forces to each other that they can't even put their heads together and fathom, what if we did this together? What if we did it without violence? We could put all of our astute ways and our skills and our intelligence and form a real business unit here and not be oppressive. An idea. Hmm, you think? So there are ways where God works with people. I was talking to my friend over the phone. When, when I look at how Jesus said, be fishers of men. We want to fish for men, for souls, to come into the kingdom of God. But we want to do it the way granddaddy did it and the way our ancestors did it. And Jesus is saying, the fishermen, I mean, he's not saying that, but that's the implication. When you fish for men, you have to fish the way you fish for fish you have to use the appropriate bait and hook for what you are trying to catch you are not going to catch a 16 year old singing rock of ages cloth for me you're not going to get anybody that way unless they're your age or older and even they might be tired of the old so, my point is not to throw it away, but don't throw the new away either. Combine them. Okay. There are times, now I'm not talking about rap and all that, 
That's between people and God. I don't even have an opinion on that. My point is, be open. Do you know there are some born-again Christians? Oh, this will amaze you. That actually got saved hearing a rap song about the Lord? <gasps> oh, shut your mouth. Mm. Yeah. It's actually happened. Bait. Fish. Rap. 12-year-old. Now, if you don't like rap, find another bait that's going to fill in and draw that 12-year-old in. But find something, because your way is not the way to the highway, baby. <laughs> you will lose more than you will gain. There are young people that sit up in church. They love the word. Word is preached. Go for it, baby. They learn. But the music is for everybody who's 50 years old and older. And it happens in way too many churches. Even churches who are trying to be innovative still have that problem. Now, I'm not saying do rap. But my God, do you know how many beautiful songs are out there that are sung by young people, 25, 35 years old? Yeah, really? And that they minister to me. They minister to people of all ages who are open, who are not stuck on a hymn. A hymn is not the only way to get into the presence of him. He is not in the box that you put yourself in. Okay. Mama Sita is done fussing. I'm talking to my brothers and sisters in Christ. We have got to change our ways. We want the world to change their ways. We better change our ways. Or we're going to lose a whole lot more of the world than we need to.